Joining me now, Albert Colby, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense under President Trump, and Richard Goldberg, a former Director of Countering Iranian Weapons of Mass Destruction at the NSC under Trump. Elbridge, um, it's a common refrain uh, in these protests or on college campuses that what Hamas did, as barbaric and cruel and heartless and criminal that it is, war crimes, um, it's justified. They're, they're repeating the actual talking points of the top Hamas leadership. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's obviously untrue. I mean, you can look at independence movements of the past, the Irish, et cetera, and others that did not engage in anything like the atrocious uh, barbarism that happened on October 7th. So I think that that's uh, facially uh, controvertible. And I would say, I think, Laura, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is when we need to have Israel's back. Israel is not asking for U.S. troops. It's not asking for U.S. intervention. It's asking for the political support, the financial support, and where necessary, the, the, the military supply to be able to go in and restore deterrence. I mean, I think the Biden administration's approach, this sort of slow walking away from support, you know, just as the incursion is about to start uh, in earnest, is exactly what, what Israel doesn't need. And it's exactly how we shouldn't be treating an ally that's willing and able to take care of its own security. We should be demonstrating not only to Israel, but to the Indias, the Polands, the South Koreas, maybe the Taiwans of the world, that this is how we, you know, stand behind allies that are willing to really go the mile to, to defend themselves in what is very, a very just cause. Now, Richard, Reuters is reporting tonight that the leader of Hezbollah will be speaking for the first time since the attacks on October 7th. Uh, what do you suspect will come out of that freak? Well, we know that he's going to do some saber rattling. Uh, we're also going to watch to see if he actually escalates further on the northern border. There is an active conflict on the northern border of Israel. There's rockets and missiles being fired every day. The Israelis are retaliating. And, of course, the fear is that the Iranians will give the direction to Nasrallah to light up that northern border with the 150,000 rockets that he has. Now, very important that the United States continues to send message of deterrence to the Islamic Republic. Remember, Iran is pulling the strings here, whether it's Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis in Yemen you just heard about in the report, the militias in Iraq that are attacking U.S. forces. This is all Iran. And if we're going to continue to be in this nuclear deal with Iran, freeing up money for the Islamic Republic... At the same time as we say, don't, don't, don't interfere, don't escalate, what message is the Ayatollah really getting? Well, Elbridge, Fox has not confirmed this, but there are reports tonight that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has agreed to provide Hezbollah with Russian -made, a Russian-made uh, missile defense system. Uh, that sounds troubling. Yeah, it is troubling, but I think it's yet another piece of evidence of the coordination that's happening not only in the region but beyond, uh, including with Russia, which has obviously had a hand uh, directly or indirectly in this, and, and ultimately China, which is the ultimate bankroll and the ultimate arbiter. I mean, it's, I don't think it's a coincidence that Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin spent an hour and a half, two hours talking alone without aides uh, at the Belt and Road Forum in Beijing. I mean, I think we absolutely are seeing greater coordination. I mean, North Korea, et cetera, was saying they were going to help Hamas. So this is a reality. And I think what, essentially what's, what's happening uh, is, from a geopolitical point of view, is that China, more than anyone, but also Russia, is trying to stretch us out and trying to deplete us and trying to make it, you know, and you can see the president in his Oval Office address, he didn't even mention China. So this is really, I think we're falling into the hands and your angle was exactly on this point. We're actually supplicating, we're begging the Chinese. This is a fantastic opportunity going forward for them to exploit their opportunity and, and we're not addressing in the way that we need to. <laughs> yeah, we're abandoning our leverage. We're unilaterally disarming ourselves vis-a-vis -vis leverage that you need, Richard, in a situation like this. Trump never would have done that. Obviously, those were his tariffs. Um, but, Richard, we're hearing the White House equivocate, as I mentioned earlier, and now the talk, uh, the, the drumbeat for a ceasefire is growing on Capitol Hill. Dick Durbin and others, this is a political calculation, it seems, that they're making because they have bleeding support among young people and among, among Arab Americans, is it not? Absolutely, this is political. We saw J Street, a far radical left-wing organization, start lobbying Capitol Hill late last week, calling for what they call a humanitarian pause. Suddenly, the White House is talking about a humanitarian pause. This is a code word. It's just a political euphemism 
for ceasefire or Hamas victory, Iranian victory. We can't allow this to happen. Why is it happening? Well, the people you just interviewed on the street there, the anti-Semites that are in these crowds, they've embedded themselves in the radical left for years, part of this intersectionalism. And so suddenly the far left thinks, oh, this is our cause too. We're suddenly pro-Hamas on the far left, and they're putting pressure on members of Congress, House and Senate, the White House. We need Joe Biden to stay strong here with Israel, but more importantly, we need all Republicans to speak out and say, no, there will not be a humanitarian pause. We're not going to let Hamas win. And do not tie Israel to Ukraine. That is ridiculous. So that can't happen. Israel stand on, stands on its own. Elbridge and Richard, both of you, thank you.